All right, now we'll take a look at some other aspects of Lowell Folson's playing. We'll start out with some of the introductions to his songs, which I really like. And we'll start out with a couple simpler ones, and then we'll move into a little tougher ones. We'll do three or four of these. Like a lot of early bluesmen, a lot of the songs that Lowell Folson recorded are characterized by really catchy introductions, which are fun to play on the guitar and you could use as part of solos or as introductions. First one comes from a tune called I'm Glad You Reconsidered, which is the answer song to Reconsider Baby, probably Lowell's biggest hit. Key of G. I'll play it for you one time and then we'll break it down. play that as part of a solo, but you, he uses it as an introduction. Starts out, we're in the key of G again, and I've got a ninth chord. You guys who are new to this, or haven't watched my chord video, which is helpful, this is a C ninth. I've got my D ninth, rather. My second finger is on the D note, which is at the fifth fret of the fifth string. My second finger is on the fourth fret of the fourth string. And then my ring finger is flattened out on the first, second, and third strings. So to start the song out, he's just going back and forth between the sixth fret and the fifth fret with that chord. And he wraps it up with a G major, which I'm playing like that. You could play as a bar chord, but it's easier to switch fingers. Like that. So first finger on the third fret, first and second string, second finger on the fourth fret of the third string, and my ring finger on the G note, which is at the fourth or fifth fret of the fourth string. So that whole opening part again. Which I just love to play. That's it's so easy, but it's cool. Then he throws in one of his signature single string runs. I think I played a little differently in the introduction, but I'm just going from the third fret of the second string, sixth fret of the second string, third fret of the first string, to the fifth fret, and then back again, same note. Second string, third fret, fifth fret, third fret. We can throw a double stop in there. Do two double stops. You can end that a lot of different ways. So what I'm doing here is going to the double stop at the second and third strings at the third fret. Coming down on the fifth fret of the fourth string. Then I'm going to the double stop here, which is at the third fret. This time I'm getting the third and fourth strings and ending on the D, fifth fret of the fifth string. Kind of like that. You can do it a lot of different ways, but I think that's what he's playing. That's the general idea. Again, let's do it one more time. example of how he's using chords, single string runs, the double stops, all together to lead off the song. And just a neat idea. Second introduction, a second idea, a little more complicated, comes from a tune called Trouble Trouble. And the tune Trouble Trouble, again in the key of G, uses a similar idea, but with chords used as double stops, almost triple stops. Very neat idea. So here's another way that Lowell Folsom would kick off a tune. Something like that. So what I'm playing, again, 
based on that ninth chord, but I'm really just using almost a triple stop. I'm flattening out my ring finger and getting the first, second, and third strings at the sixth fret. That's the first part. Now you could play a whole ninth chord, but I'm just playing those top three strings. Then I'm hitting one and going right to the fifth fret. Same thing. The third fret. And then in the tune, he's got the horns playing on the five chord. And he just plays it the same thing a little quicker. box bouncing on the fourth and fifth strings at the fifth fret up to the third fret. Really neat introduction. So let me do it again. Into the song. So the use of those ninth chords is another part of Lowell's playing, and he uses them a lot to introduce the songs. Again, just a simple idea that sounds really, really neat. Now to, to move it up a little bit, to notch it up, let's, let's take a look at an instrumental song he does called uh, Blue Smoke, or I'm sorry, not Blue Smoke, that's Merle Travis, Smoky Room, and this is recorded on chess, on chess records. And he starts it out with a very T-bone walker type approach, but a little, a little different. Let me play the whole introduction to the song through for you, and then we'll break it down. us to a couple ideas that are kind of neat. So the instrumental is called Smoky Room, and if there's one part of that which I haven't quite figured out all the way, but I'll show you what I've got so far, and you can take it from there or do your own thing. Starts out, you're playing in the key of G. Again, you'll notice slow like the key of G. And we're starting out with a ninth chord, which we've used before, and we're sliding all the way down from the D to the what would really be an A, A ninth. So we're going. Like that. And then, we're going on the five chord. The song is in the key of G, so we're in basically D minor. And again, I've got that three string bar. First, second, third frets at the tenth fret. It's a minor, so if I throw in, if I throw in the root note, the D, got a D minor. So I'm just taking that root note out of it and just sliding down. It's a ninth chord with the minor, and I'm doing the same thing for the C chord. I'm going to the same spot. This time I'm sliding to the tenth fret, which is a G. C minor lick. Then I'm going to a ninth, which is a um, F ninth. Then I'm going down to, which is an E, E flat ninth. Right there. So let me do the whole thing so far. We're starting the slide each time from that, from the D ninth. this here at the F ninth, he's picking some of the strings on the high notes, so maybe those top three. Then this right here looks to me like a, a B flat six. So, or a 
that's an add ninth, add ninth. B flat, add nine. So basically it's a B flat chord, and he's taking his pinky on the first string at the eighth fret. And then wrapping it up with a D seventh. So D seventh, your C seventh chord, just take it up two frets. And it's hitting the bass notes, top three. Probably top two strings. So this part is probably the trickiest part. So he goes. Let me do the whole thing one time. Listen to the original. It's called Smoky Room. You can get it on YouTube. Listen to it. He actually does play this on the guitar on some songs, but I've also heard it in T-Bone Walker's playing and Otis Rush and others. It's a very standard blues backup, and it's really easy, and you can use this in a lot of different ways. So if I were playing that Smoky Room introduction, I'd head right into this rhythm pattern, which leads us into the next part of this video, which is to show you some of the different rhythm ideas in Lowell's playing, not just from his own guitar playing, but also from the horn section behind him. So we'll start out 